Hey there, in this video I am going to completely destroy my iRobot and pull it apart just to show you what's on the inside. Follow along and watch my disassembly video and watch this video if you want to replace the battery, if you want to replace a wheel or any other internal component then this is the video for you. Watch on and see what happens. Now you say, where do we start? Let's take a look. Well, flip it upside down and have a look at this base plate. There are some screws here to undo. This is the first thing you want to do. Undo the screws like I'm doing now. And let's take that cover off and see what's underneath. This is where I tell you that I've never actually pulled one of these apart. So, I'm going to be just as surprised as you are to see what's under here. Let's have a look. Here we go. The panel just lifts up. Oh no, we need to get this undone. So the side brush, there's another screw in here. We undo that and we lift up on the brush once that screw's undone and the whole brush comes out of the way. Just like so. Now we lift the panel out of the way and whoa, the battery is right there. That's easy. That's got to be one of the simplest battery replacements I've seen on a robot vacuum so far. The access to this is super simple. Now you can see the battery there. It's a little square, a rectangular battery pack, and it just pushes into some connector boards. So you just lift it up and out of the way. Now I'm going to provide you with a link in my description to buy a replacement battery if you need it. So check those out. Let's move along to the rollers now. Now to get the rollers out, there's just a simple flap. You push that little green button in and lift the flap up and the rollers pull up and out, just like so. Now if you need to replace them, get some new ones and put them back in in the reverse order. Simple. Now let's take a look at the driving wheel on this side. There's a couple of screws which hold this in and I am undoing them now. And I use a manual screwdriver it's easy, everybody has one, so getting access to this is simple for most people. If you're willing to give it a go, of course. Now that those screws are undone, the driving wheel assembly simply lifts up and out of the way. There's some simple connector PCB boards that connect into this, and it couldn't be any more simple than that. You just pull it up and out of the way. This is very simple compared to some of the other robots I've looked at. How good is that? It would be so easy to replace this if you needed to. What next? Let's take a look at the bumper assembly. Now, there is a retainer plate, which is held by some screws that I am undoing now, and they run around the bottom of the bumper. Once that's undone, there'll be a lug on the top holding the bumper, which we can move it up out of the way and undo any connectors that are attached to it. Now, you're probably all wondering, what the heck do I do with all the screws and how do I remember where they go? Well, I just seem to have a knack for knowing where things go and I put them in little piles as I pull them out and I put them back in a reverse order. If you want a more structured approach to this, then you can buy an assembly mat, which is a blue mat. You can solder on it and it has lots of little holes or divisions that you can put the screws in in a dedicated order and keep them together so that you know exactly where things come from. I'll throw a link in the description so you can check those out if you wish. They're quite handy and really, really cheap. So now that the retainer plate's off, the bumper is loose and there is a clip on top holding it. I'm just gonna leave it there for now because I can't get the connector undone properly and I think I'll disassemble the unit a bit more before I attempt to pull on that. I don't wanna break anything. So then, let's get the other driving wheel out. Now there's another two screws to hold this assembly in, just like before. Undo the two screws and we're going to pull a whole assembly up and out. And there'll be a little connector board which just slides up and out of the way. There we go. Let's have a look underneath. There we go. The slot for the board is where I'm pointing to and it just pushes into place. It makes the connection and it's ready to go.
Hmm, what's next? I know, the side brush motor. It appears to be held in by two Phillips screws as well. So I'm going to undo it and hopefully it just pulls up out of the way like the drive motors did. Now if you have any issues with any of these parts, you should be able to buy replacement parts online and then just simply swap them out and give them a go, see if they work. This looks to be a little bit different. It has two springs in there where it gets its contact power from. So when it's pushed into place, that's how it's creating its electrical connection. Now we've got that out, let's have a look at the main suction motor and roller assembly. It's a big assembly, this one, it's all together and there appears to be four Phillips screws holding this assembly in place. I'm going to undo them and pull it out of the way. Now, I really appreciate you watching my video. I hope you're finding value in this video and what would be awesome if you could subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of videos similar to this and I like to give things a go and pull things apart and and I really love to hear when people have followed my videos, saved themselves some money and fixed things themselves. I get a real buzz out of that and I know that you get a real sense of satisfaction when you do something like that yourself. So I encourage you to watch my videos and try these things and I know that you're going to get great satisfaction out of fixing something for yourself. The main roller assembly and suction motor just pulls out just as simple as the drive motors and other components. This thing really is awesome in terms of disassembly. When you're looking for replacement parts what I do is I get the part numbers off the components themselves model numbers off the units you're looking for and simply do a Google search. It's amazing what you can find to, by doing that. Do some research, watch some videos like this, watch a couple if you have to, and you will get there. Let's flip this thing over and try and get this cover panel off. Now it'll be held on by plastic lugs, so I'm gonna pull on it and sort of pry it up. But underneath, there are two lugs, and you can see my finger pushing on it now. If you push up on that, which sticks through the bottom, and pull at the same time, it pops up very easily. I'm going to flip it over so you can see what it looks like. There's a little lug there, and a couple of lugs there, the other ones that I pushed up on. Now that we're in here, we have a bunch of screws holding this assembly together. There's an outer circle of screws and an inner circle, which I'm pointing to now. I am going to unscrew all of them and then attempt to pull the cover apart.
All the screws are undone, and without applying any pressure, the cover just lifts up out of the way. If there's any resistance, then there may be another screw connected, so that's just a good thing to look out for when you're pulling on stuff like that. But if it lifts up without any resistance, then that's ideal. Now you can see the bumper is attached by one little connector. I'm going to pull on it now. Be very careful not to put on the wires, but actually on the connector itself. But the trick is just to do it gently and do not apply too much force, otherwise you will break either the cable or the connector block itself. There we go. Now it's disconnected and it's just a little block with a couple of pins in there. Move it out of the way and we can move on to what's next. The motherboard. For most people, this is as far as you probably want to go, but it is possible that you want to get to the little roller at the front there and you might need to undo something to pull that out. Or you might want to get to the drop sensors which are running around the sort of outer edge of the housing and they are all connected to a connector which is on the bottom of this motherboard. So I'm going to show you how to get the motherboard out. Let's go. On top there's a clear plastic button frame that connects the buttons to the main board. I've taken that off. And I've also disconnected a wee ribbon cable by pulling out a tab, pulling out the ribbon cable in that corner there and undone that prior to lifting this up. The board itself was sitting on some plastic lugs and I just pulled up gently on those to get the board up and out of the way. Now bear in mind it is connected to that red wire which goes down to a little sensor on the base. I'm not, I wasn't 100% sure how to get that out so I'm not going to pull too hard and I'll leave it connected for the time being. If you missed anything here, the video did skip forward so after this I'm going to put it all back together again and you can actually have a look at any details as I put it back together that you might have missed. Now that the board's loose, I've undone a couple of connectors there. Again, be very careful with these connectors. Don't pull on the wires, but gently work the plugs backwards and forwards until it pulls out. Do not apply too much pressure or you will break something. So there's a couple of big connectors, a couple of smaller connectors under there, and a ribbon cable. Now that they're undone, that main board is out of the way. Still has that one connector connected to the red cable there but it's relatively simple and I'll remind you that this is actually my first time pulling this unit apart or any iRobot Roombas for that matter I think it's relatively easy I haven't come across anything that has been problematic or difficult in my mind and for the simple component replacement things like the wheels or the, the motors and the assemblies they should be piece of cake for most people to replace without any issues again if you're not confident in doing this sort of stuff then don't give it a go leave it to the repair professionals but I like to think my video will help people who have out of warranty repairs required they don't quite know where to take it they're about to throw it in the trash and they just want to give it a go and see if they can do it themselves and this will help people save money keep things out of the trash, and reduce waste, which has got to be a good thing, right? Now, I'm going to see if I can remember how this thing goes back together. So take a look and see how I go. I'm going to speed it up so that you don't have to watch it for as long, but check it out and see how it goes back together. See if I missed anything.
Woohoo! It's back together. Perfect. Now, hopefully I've inspired you to have a look and do something like this yourself. I'm really interested to know what you have done. Leave me a comment if you've done a similar robot or you've used my videos to help fix something. I really look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check my description for special links and discount codes.